Hey guys, uh, Dr. Sean here reviewing a study that was forwarded to me on Twitter based on a discussion that came out about sprinting versus distance running, I should say marathon or so. We've been uh, discussing which is a healthier form of exercise, sprinting versus uh, distance running. And I am sort of frustrated and people are asking for studies to show which of the form of exercise ends up causing you to live longer or is, is better for you. The problem is it, it's not a well-studied area. I haven't spent a lot of time looking for studies in particular uh, about that. As much as I like uh, sprinting, it's just uh, it hasn't been a personal uh, initiative uh, for me that I've uh, applied a lot of time uh, to take a look at longevity. Uh, I've been most, mostly focusing on uh, the health benefits of uh, sprinting, which are replete. I mean, basically, uh, it shows that you get a lot, lot more musculature, and not that muscle in itself is necessarily the greatest biomarker, because if you look at bodybuilders or powerlifters who have a tremendous amount of muscle, they don't necessarily have a survival benefit either. But we do know that muscle mass or muscle density is associated with uh, the quality of life and longevity to the extent that it's, uh, it is a mitigator against sarcopenia which is uh, a condition which diminishes your uh, lifespan as well as your quality of life. So to the extent that sprinters have more muscle mass, that could possibly explain why, um, likely I think, uh, helps to, con uh, to explain why sprinters live um, healthier, healthier life lifespans and why that's a, a, uh, uh, and a more uh, important desirable form of exercise. So let's take a look at this study that was forwarded to me. Uh, the title of the study is The Differences in Life Expectancy Between Olympic High Jumpers, Discus Throwers, Marathoners, and 100 Meter Runners. It's from the BMC Sports Science, Medicine, and Rehabilitation Journal, article number three, uh, dated 2017. If you want to get a screenshot of <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, citation, you can go ahead and get that now. And what I'd like to say about this study is, uh, first of all, I'm not, a, um, I'm not a, a fan of this study. So because it, it looks at just 336 people and what they do is they look at men and women who were Olympic athletes and albeit in you know, the top performers, the top 20 and in those particular events, they look at when they were in the Olympics back in 1928 to 1948. And then they infer the results from the fact that these people were uh, Olympic uh, athletes in these particular areas to try to as form an association why somebody lived, why a particular group lived longer than others. So basically it had nothing to do uh, with whether they were continued to run marathons, continue to sprint, continue to throw a disc, or continue to be high jumpers. It just looked at what these people did back in 1928, 1948, and then let's see who lived longer. So I think that's a pretty bad study design for the purposes of trying to determine whether a particular form of exercise is better than another. The number of people is small, and looking at 336 people and how they divide it up just for interest is 55 among males, 55 marathoners, 56 sprinters, 58 high jumpers, and and uh, uh, 60 discus throwers, so pretty evenly. Among the females, uh, there wasn't a reported number for the uh, marathoners, um, but uh, there were uh, 54 sprinters, 28 high jumpers, and 28 discus throwers. So what they found was, <coughs> excuse me, among the high jumpers, it was 7.1 survival, uh, the, the uh, overall expected survival was highest, <coughs> excuse me, among the high jumpers was 7.1, and among females, it, um, it was uh, 4.7, and lowest among the sprinters in that particular group, 1.6 among the females, and 0 0.8 among the, the males. So <clears throat> basically what you can infer from this is uh, just how those people uh, that happened to be those athletes uh, decades ago who survived longer. <clears throat> so a better design would be focusing in on sprinting and marathoning and high jumping and discus throwers to see what sort of influence if they continue to do those act activities. I think that'd be a lot more interesting. So it's important to take a look at these studies and see how it's done. What were they really looking at? And uh, for power, which is ep epidemiological measurement, 
helpful to determine the uh, validity of the conclusions to get to was pretty low because they didn't look at this over a, uh, a large number of people or over a long period of time. In other words, had they followed that action, discus throwing, high jumping, and marathon sprinting for decades as opposed to just one particular point in time when they were in the Olympics, then it would have more power, more validity. So not a great study, uh, but to, to the extent it may get people to think about sprinting versus you know, distance running, I think it's good. So I invite discussions. And moreover, I hope that we can, in the future, get more studies that specifically look at sprinting versus distance running for the purposes of deriving helpful associations. And it would be great if you could, you could look at causal uh, determinants as well, but that's unlikely because there, there's so many um, uh, factors involved in confounders but at least we can begin to have better associational uh, studies looking at the, the difference between sprinting and marathons. So those are my thoughts this morning on this particular study. I hope you have a great day.